last time on Reckless Attack. The boundless city of Agmar is full of opportunities and mysteries alike. As the party begins to explore within the city's walls, they waste no time in learning about what their new home has to offer, and what may happen to it if they fail to stop the mysterious, dangerous force known as the Mothman. Find out what happens next on Reckless Attack. everybody Hi. hello Woo, that was a good one welcome to reckless attack once again thanks for listening thanks for coming my dear darling players i am your dungeon master nathan once again here at the helm of the mighty uss reckless attack <laughs> which is <laughs> not a battleship well it is in a spiritual sense mm-hmm. but also we are a dungeons and dragons fifth edition actual play podcast welcome to episode 22 on tuesday on you tuesday guys, it's tuesday tuesday february 22nd february the second month of 2022 yes this episode will release on tuesday at 2 a.m central time <laughs> we were all so jazzed you guys yes. the amount <laughs> of hype in this when room that would happen that this this episode brought to you by the number two yes <laughs> this is our sesame street episode <laughs> yes thank you for joining us on this two, nearly two, 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 nearly two, two, two dozen episodes yeah wow. that's crazy mm-hmm. uh and also the gods have aligned yeah, and blessed just, us mm-hmm. in this in this two this truly magical blessings. once in a lifetime reckless day. attack yes reckless attack we have currently gone to 11 twice yes <laughs> but hey 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 that's enough about Tus, and that's enough about me and also our peerless battleship the uss <laughs> reckless attack across from me is the unbeatable i'm trying to decide if there should only be two frogs for today as opposed to three frogs because jonathan no. i like the spirit <laughs> right but there's a promise that we've given our audience fair, fair. which is a stack I have to stick to my true creative you, vision. Yes. You, have, you, have, you have to find <laughs> That's right. a fourth frog so you can have two <laughs> two stacks, yeah. two pairs of oh, frogs. Mm, maybe this is the episode where <laughs> Junior <laughs> finds a friend. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jonathan, and I, and I play Checkers, the Grung Druid, and his trusty frog pals, Mango and Junior. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Checkers is feeling very content and relaxed today as yes. he has found a place behind the Golden Tree Guild that really just speaks to him and comforts him and also allows Junior to hang out on a little mushroom raft inside of a hot spring, which is his <laughs> true habitat. So he's having a good time. And found a weird book. Yeah. And he found a book that has words that he can't read, which is most books, to be honest. There's <laughs> like, a great is, many books on Rick's This is nothing special. <laughs> right. But this one is interesting, if only because he found it inside the tree that he was sleeping on. And that is not something that happens very often. To my left. Hi everyone, I'm David, and I play Kaskrin Brightmane, and Kaskrin has finally found a place in Agmar to save his game. <laughs> <laughs> a, uh, 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 what's, uh, what's it called? A spawn point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The rest of us die. Turn to the 12. Nice. Yeah. We all end up in Rachma and yeah. <laughs> Kaskrin ends up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and to my left. Hello everyone, my name is Steve, and I am playing Sylvesterlin, the dragonborn monk, who in the spirit of this Tuesday of twenty <laughs> uh, uh of twenty twenty two Really you could just February, say Tuesday, like uh, a T W O a celebration yeah, of Tuesday. Let, let me try that again. In the spirit <laughs> of Tuesday, yes. we are going to try to give you folks, our listeners, a balance of wise self. And goober self. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you didn't clear this. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone buckle up. We this, hold on. Yeah. This is a role-playing decision. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and, uh, his, 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 the moon alignments, you know, like the, it's kind of like his astral signs or yes, whatever. Yes. Everything, is coming, everything is coming together today on this Tuesday. The two suns. The two are suns a particular are special alignment. Yes. This episode yes. is going to be two hours and 22 minutes long. <laughs> yeah. And if it's not, it will It'll, be. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's the same. Buckle up. Everyone. 55 <laughs> minutes done two Again. and one eighth time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And across from me, 
Hi, it's me, Sophie. I play Valeska Carter, the human asterisk cleric of the Arcana domain, who is very intense in setting so much that her eyes glowed, but only self knows that. That is true. And yeah. I, I should also say congratulations to my fellow user yeah. Yeah. of the Desk of, of, the doing. Desk of doing. Mm-hmm. This is Val's only desire in life is to be a user <laughs> yes. of the desk of so doing. So again, that means that once more of these kind of abilities are unlocked, which behind the screen is really just the more you use it, the higher level you are, the more kind of bureaucratic and legislative accomplishments you do at the desk, especially unlocks different magical abilities, which change from desk to desk and even sometimes user to user or generation to generation. But some of them are accessible only to quote unquote users of the desk. And the two of you have unlocked user status. And we'll get into that Ooh, some other time. Yeah. <laughs> also, could you guys imagine if we got our dates wrong and this actually releases on the 24th? Oh, right? oh, oh, uh, no, <laughs> yeah. because what we will do is we will, oh, God, but it won't it's be a Tuesday. Tuesday. Fourth day. And yeah. so, yeah, well, like we can't even release it. Early. Oh, no, guys, I hope we did it right. Yeah, well, we're in a lot we, of trouble. We have to. <laughs> We'll just publish our own calendar. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. The Reckless Attack branded calendar <laughs> where it Which just every every Tuesday, Tuesday is the second Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, a lot happened last week. Lovely character stuff. A lot of exploration of the city. Just little little bits and bobbles. There was some character reflection, and there's a lot of reading. Long and short of it, you have an idea of what you might be up against here in the city of Agmar. The red city of Agmar! Excuse me. I, you, can you edit that out? Thank you. No. Uh, <laughs> the people must know right. your disrespect. <laughs> it is a creature fabled, has appeared many times in past generations, called the Mothman. And everyone's giggling because they called it a goth moth. You got mm. mad at me for Thixius, and you're sneaking in the goth, <laughs> sneaking in Mothman. It's a it's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real real fictional creature in our world. Is a Mothman uh, that this is based off of, and it is also a uh, visits in the night is seen frequently and is often a portender of disaster. So this is a real thing. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't know it was a real thing either. That's all right, because then you <laughs> Wait, said goth moth like and it was like, fuck. Wait, is this prophecies? Yes, kind of. I shall read that Wikipedia page yeah, later. Yeah, you can read the Mothman Wikipedia page. It's di- uh, this I one's different wanna, enough. I just, wanna, I just want to understand the reference. I have a list. <laughs> right. Starting with the Beastie Boys. <laughs> yeah, starting with the Beastie Boys. But the long and short of it, and we'll get into it a little bit in character, this thing attacks at night It feeds on fear, and at some point, after it has appeared, disaster strikes, a bridge collapsing, even an earthquake, something happens that causes destruction and loss of life. A sun being pulled from the sky. Well, yeah, I didn't find that example specifically, but like that would be an example. It would have to be a very big Mothman, probably. (laughs) probably. But the exact details of it, you're not entirely sure of, but you have... Some threads to pull on, as we like to say here on this podcast. That is not where we start here on the USS Reckless Attack. We start at at the the stern. That's the back. We uh, we start on the boat of story. <laughs> on the bow. On the the st- on this on the poop deck. Are we doing <laughs> yeah. the Titanic Rose and Jack thing at the front of the boat? Or are we at the back of the boat? We the five it, of us Jack are aligned. Rose at the back of the boat. Or? Who is who is who is on the board at the end of the movie, and who's the one who dies? No, we're a line of five people mm-hmm. all doing the Titanic. No, where we are starting this episode. I would rather not compare this ship to the Titanic. Yeah. Well, tech, I mean, twenty-two episodes that might have gone longer than the Titanic. I'm not entirely sure, but where we are starting. On this most magical of two episodes is with Kaskrin, who has last episode requested some information on people across the city here in Agmar, just to get to know some of the movers and shakers, get a bit a little bit better lay of the land. David, where is Kaskrin doing his 
research, knowing that the map room is currently intensely occupied as this is <laughs> happening. So Kaskrin is in the conference room in the Golden Tree Adventuring Guild. Mm-hmm. He's got all of these papers, Ooh, yeah. all of these dossiers spread out, and it's going one by one through them, maybe cross-referencing some and looking through them. It's about mid-afternoon. The sun is starting to set a little bit, and so there are some long shadows being cast through the big windows in this room. Mm -hmm. And throughout the afternoon, Berga has been coming back and forth, tending to guild matters, but handing him dossiers that he has requested. Mm -hmm. He takes these papers, but any time that Berga draws close, Kaskrin tenses up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. When they're talking, he maybe doesn't quite meet her eyes as he politely takes the papers. But there is a moment as Berga is approaching Kaskrin with another set of papers in her lap. And Kaskrin doesn't doesn't hear her coming. He's so focused in his work that Berga says, like, here you go, Kaskrin. And Kaskrin clenches the paper, almost crushing it in his hand in reaction and looks to Berga. I was going to ask, do you envision Cass's tension and kind of reactions? How how well does he hide it? Or how small are these reactions? Or how, you know, how visible is it? And how much is he aware of it? Yeah, he has been hiding it very well up until this moment when it catches him off guard. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, to startle you there, uh, Kaskrin. I just have the last few papers you, you asked for. Yeah. And Kaskrin... He, he wants to say, it's okay, Berga, but the words that come out of his mouth are, does it hurt? Let's go, uh, sorry, uh, what does uh, what hurt? Is this like a, a pickup line or that's... <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Berga. Does, does the shard in your chest, does it, does it hurt you? Not in a way that I notice anymore. When it got put in... It was very painful, and uh, for a long time I had to learn to fight with a little bit of, of twinge of pain, but this many years I have I have gotten used to it. Why would you ever want an object of focus inside you in the first place? And he almost, he kind of like gets a little... Not angry, mm-hmm. but like his tension is starting. You know, he's been holding tension all afternoon and is now starting to come out. How could you even think to do that to yourself? They're so dangerous. You have no idea the power that they store inside them, Berga. You don't understand. And he is like holding the paper in his hand mm-hmm. and it is now just a ball. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm st- at yeah. this point, I'm sure just yeah. truly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> unreadable, yeah. useless. Just- I'm 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 sorry, Berga. I I didn't I didn't mean for that to come out. Oh, it is uh, it is all right. And you know her her eyebrows are a little furrowed as she looks at you with kind of clear concern. She just kind of shifts around a little bit in her seat, and she says, "Well, uh, yes, they are very very dangerous. This one is dangerous, certainly. It's a." A piece of a sword inside of me, which is not something usually you want inside of you, yeah? Uh, But I am part of a a long tradition from where I'm from. These shards are, well, they're more than just things of power or or meaning. They are what our our culture is built on, our sense of of duty, of of togetherness, of stewardship, of, of community. And Kaskrid is, is nodding along, and he says, An object of focus destroyed my home, Berga. And there was nothing that I, I could do. I guess I just need to know, did you choose this for yourself? If you could go back and, and undo it, would you choose not to have the shard in you? And she, she actually pauses at that question and really takes a moment and she says well first I am sorry to hear I did some reading of course on you all to learn about you and 
who you could be and, and how I might help you. But as you may have seen, some of our records are not robust. So I am sorry to hear that. And I am sorry that you have suffered such loss. The objects, the well, there are many. Some used for great good, others corrupted, and both used to do great and terrible things. I admit, when I took the vow, when I volunteered to take in this piece of history, I wanted to do it for the power, for the adventure, for what it would mean for my future. It's a great honor, you see. It's a great opportunity. It means standing. It means everything. Of course, of course. But it gave me a great gift beyond the abilities. It showed me the importance of doing for others. Yeah? For the importance of using your powers and your abilities to help when you can. And Kaskrin is nodding along with those last few words. He drops the paper that he has been holding and turns to Berga and, and is for the first time all afternoon able to look her in the eye and says, I think I understand. Thank you, Berga. If it was all right with Kaskrin, she would reach over and like pat your whatever the 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 non extended hand you know the, yeah. the hand that didn't have the crumpled bit of paper yeah but would, would whatever hand was closest would pat and just kind of give you a solemn look not saying anything out loud but saying plenty in their exchange yep. of of eyes yep she pauses for a moment and she sits back into her wheelchair and she just kind of gives a little smile and a nod and says um. Is there anything that I, I else can get you? I will make sure to not surprise you uh, next time I come in. <laughs> Thank you, Berga. Well, actually, if you have the dossier of Alabaster Marquette, that would be wonderful. I think so. That was uh, one of the city councilors, yeah? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought that was in that. Fi- like I said, I am. we could use some better filing systems as she kind of like rolls out. Um <laughs> And the last thing that she says is, oh, yeah, and I, I will be sure to uh, to call you for, for dinner. Uh, I think it will be a soonish. Cool. And, I, and Catherine's I, I just, like... I just imagine, like, Val's ear twitch. Val's like head, that. like, <laughs> pokes out the map room, like, filing system? What? <laughs> <laughs> I've made this already. <laughs> I have plans. Before dinner, which is, I think, kind of retroactively, and we talked about this a little bit off podcast, that you guys had all kind of said, hey, let's all be back by dinner. We'll go over what we what we did, if we found anything, if we did anything, met anyone of interest, and you would eat. And Alareth, the detective, uh, essentially, or the hired investigator. P.I. Tree Guy. P.I. Tree Guy. Yes, I believe that was it. <laughs> P.I. Tree Guy. Would, would come by just as night was falling. So far, the attacks, you know, had been later at night. So while it's dark... And there is a ticking clock. You know, would know that you would have a little bit of time to talk and strategize, rest if you had to, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just one quick question. So while Selv was helping Val gather all of the materials for all of the research and everything, did he come across any books about either the history of Agmar or specifically the dragon skull that is in the uh, the main square there? Absolutely. Yes, you would have. And again, I wouldn't I would say you would need to spend a little more time looking through it, which you could now, certainly. But uh, no, n- not going to do that now. I think at this point, Selv has uh, it's kind of like <laughs> sitting in front of a computer for too long. Yep. It's You know, he's the desk of doing makes us take a break every hour. That's, That's true. true. But <laughs> that is true. And I'll, I'll, I should have asked. So Selv is going He's helping skim, helping sort, going through things. Maybe Val's talking through kind of what she's seeing and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. But either way, you are being exposed to information about this thing that attacked you and that you fought a couple of times. Does Self have any reaction to it or is he able to kind of treat it as a scholarly pursuit? You know, now that he is better, now that he has faced it, or is there a reaction? So. Initially, as he's going through, Selv will is still trying to accumulate as much information about this thing yep. uh, as possible because 
he also has kind of like, you know, Vel's occasional mantra coming through his brain of like, if you're prepared, you're never overwhelmed. <laughs> and uh, so like, he's kind of like taken that as advice. Oh, and that. so if he is prepared for this, he will not be overwhelmed by it. Mm. While he knows and understands it is a type of magical fear. So there's, it's not something that he might be able to logically get through. Totally. He is still kind of mentally preparing himself and almost like focusing his willpower mm -hmm. on, you know, even though it feels like that. it's all closed in, it's not actually closed in. You're not actually trapped in anything when this thing hits you. And so he's kind of like kind of going through this in his mind. Yeah, um, very as he's firming and building that. Uh, yeah, as he's uh, as he's yeah. kind of going and researching, it's wonderful. and then knowing also that he is not going to be alone the next time this thing shows up mm -hmm. yeah. is very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're able to not just while you're helping Val, but kind of afterwards as the research kind of winds down, easily able to find that kind of baseline information for you to go through of the city itself. Any questions you might have, or at least of the history, the basics. And of, we'll say, dragons in the area. Okay. Um, and you might be able to find some stuff, especially between those two, those two okay. books. I'll kind of put those on the side in the selves pile to look yes. at later. <laughs> uh, do not reshelve. Yes. <laughs> or reshelve. Re <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> that's, that's the goober half. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice. <laughs> and then, yeah, so that'll, that'll be later after this. We take care of this problem first. Mm -hmm. Sophie, anything Val? would want to do with kind of the last couple hours of her day. Um, is there anything on your checklist, on your massive to-do list that Val would like to make sure gets done? I think for now, after a full day of research, she's not really looking to get a lot of to-dos done anymore. Totally. Once she and Selv have wrapped up the research, she's going to take a study break and go... Very see Hody uh, uh. and check in on Hody. She trusts Berga got Hody settled and everything, but with everything going on, Val has not seen Hody in 12 hours. Yeah. I am sure. Like that. I am sure that the fans have been clamoring. Yeah. Where is our precious baby daughter? Mm -hmm. mm. So Hody, Hody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Val will just go check on her see her little stable and probably give her some brushes and some scratches. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say, I think I've always imagined that in an adventuring guild, there has to have been, there has to be a place for animals, right? Yeah. Like some sort of like, we have a wagon somewhere. Right. Exactly. And a horse makes sense and whatever else. Um, so <laughs> we have a horse that's been pulling her wagon this whole also time. Also true. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been an ox. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, I think it was an ox. I think it was an oxen. If I, I have remember no right. idea if we said it or not. I think it was like episode one. Yeah. Flavor text. <laughs> <laughs> like eagle eared listeners. <laughs> write in. Tell us. Because mm -hmm. we, we will. And we'll, then we'll, we'll hear poll you. for what the name is. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's been really cool hearing everyone's kind of wish list for things where I originally kind of thought like, oh, there's like a nice little courtyard space. Mm -hmm. But now I'm kind of imagining that it actually opens up into a pretty nice outdoor area, mm -hmm. um, a backyard, basically. Mm -hmm. And in one part is this nice little grove that Checkers has been hanging out in with the mushrooms, with the beautiful nature. I just freaking love the idea of like a super chillaxed mango that's like uh, gelatinous. Again, it's turned into a puddle yeah. and right. has been boiling, uh -huh. <laughs> boiled frog uh -huh. for however long the <laughs> afternoon at least <laughs> yes um but also is a a pen for hody mm -hmm. and usually this is where i would ask like well where do you think hody is but i have gotten the image of just a donkey sized doghouse <laughs> a la snoopy yeah uh -huh. and as you approach oh man if if hody's on her back on the roof of the doghouse <laughs> Well, when she, I believe me, I already thought about it. When she has wings and or spider legs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But right now, as a tiny hooved baby, <laughs> you don't even need to call out. Mm -hmm. She would hear the crunching of footsteps and would emerge. And she would have also mm -hmm. done the same for checkers mm -hmm. as you were going out, and presumably, literally anyone who would go out there, she would expectantly be like, "Oh, who's that? Oh, let's give me some scratches and maybe some snacks and whatever." I would uh, like to clarify that her pen is. 
as far away from Etris's shack as possible. <laughs> yeah, no, Etris, Etris knows. You know, it's one of those things where like Etris, he understands that he can only put himself in the most danger. I imagine he has posted out outside of his oh, thing, yes. like a, you know, minimum safe distance. <laughs> yes, and several of those signs of like stage one exposure <laughs> risk, stage two exposure risk. And yeah, there's signage all over the place. Mm -hmm. But yes, Hody would happily be there, crunch on any oats that you gave her or whatever mm -hmm. it is that... Val would probably bring donkeys. like a good mix of things. Uh, probably yes. some oats, some carrots, and like two sugar cubes. Yes. For a balanced yeah. diet. For a balanced <laughs> diet. Yes. A growing a baby. Snack. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And she is just truly thrilled. She seems very happy in her pen in her new setting, she has already mm -hmm. adjusted to life here in Agmar and is like, yep, this is great. Cool. Mm -hmm. Don't have to be on the road anymore. I'm, I'm happy. I got my own space. I get mm -hmm. over there. It's all great. Mm -hmm. So Val would spend maybe, I don't know, an hour just like decompressing from yes, totally. the research. And yes, the desk of doing has a magic lumbar. What was it? Uh, lumb magic. Lumb magic <laughs> chair. Uh, and she stretched a whole bunch, but you still just got to like get up and walk around a little bit more. And then after you making... can join the hot tub yeah. with mango <laughs> yeah. if you wanted to right. truly relax. I Val would not want to risk disturbing mango mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. such mm -hmm. a Zen state. Mm -hmm. Mango probably has like a, a, a nice like hot towel over oh, yeah. his forehead. <laughs> Just those cucumbers yeah. they yeah. put at you yeah. like, yeah. like oh a spa. God. And like yes. as Val goes to the hot tub, she like accidentally just nudges no, him. This no, this is no. why Val would not. <laughs> I mean, I both Mango and Junior, I think, would both have like little yeah. cucumber slices on their <laughs> eyes as they're yeah. relaxing in the hot spring. Oh, except <laughs> I'm imagining neither of them fit. Oh, yeah. Because Junior's so tiny, so he has one cucumber yeah. as a hat. Yeah. Yeah. And then for, for Mango, he literally has two slices of cucumber just like on his eyeballs yeah, just like sitting on top just sitting on top <laughs> yeah. but they are so pleased yeah. at this outcome note to self buy watermelons for mango <laughs> yeah. grow giant cucumbers grapes yes yeah. Yeah. grapes yeah Learn. i feel like grapes would be too big like a thinly sliced blueberry Oh, Maybe. How big yeah. is Junior? Uh, and what is the is appropriate size, size to yeah. fruit <laughs> right. to fit on his eye? Well, guys, great news. We have a whole campaign to explore <laughs> yeah. these sorts of weighty issues. Yeah. But the day continues on mm -hmm. and turns into evening. Hi, everyone. It's Jonathan here. Hi everyone, it's David here with the mid-roll. Yay, the mid-roll. Welcome back to another episode with us. We hope you've been enjoying it so far. If you have, let us know if you haven't already. We always love hearing about the comments that you all have, and just if you haven't given us a rating on Spotify or iTunes, please be sure to do that, because we greatly appreciate it, and you all are great people, so we love seeing all the comments that you have. Along with that, if you haven't already, consider checking us out on Patreon. We have another behind the screen episode coming out later this month where the Reckless Attack crew sits down to discuss what's been going on the past couple of episodes and how we feel about Nathan's foisting of the Mothman upon us. <laughs> and how much any of us actually know about the Mothman slash Mothra slash uh, any, any of that. Spoilers, it's, it's zero. We it's, know nothing about it. None of us know, but that's okay. Yeah. But we have we had a fun little chat and it will be on our Patreon later this month. So check us out there. We got all kinds of other bonus content available on Patreon. If you hang out there long enough, you even get an exclusive sticker. It's a pretty cool sticker from what I've heard mm -hmm. and seen cuz I've definitely received it. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, if you haven't seen us on social media, come check us out on Twitter at reckless_attack underscore attack, where we post a lot of memes, status updates, and just overall have fun with the community. Yeah, it's a great time. You can interact with Nathan. You can interact with the rest of us there. But we were all on Twitter and we will say hi. So please sit, come over and say hi to all of us too. I think that's it for the mid-roll. We'll send you back to our regularly scheduled episode. Bye, everyone. Bye. I would just say once Val is mm -hmm. done, again, not disturbing the Zen-like <laughs> state... 
But she would actually go and talk to Berga, catch up on the day, help with dinner, just generally start chatting with her. And I was wondering, would it be an insight check to guess her accent and what her native language might be? Yes. So it could be insight. It could also be history because she kind of told you the general area that she was from. I would say either of those two work for me. Let's go with insight. Okay. Guidance. Because mm-hmm. I can. 20. Oh, nice. Wow. Her native tongue is one that you, it's one of those where if you would have guessed, you would have guessed this one, but languages are messy. This is the language of Utkesh, U-T-K-E-S-H, but it's basically the language of the kind of far north. Okay. Does that even work? I don't not know. speak. Ooh. This okay. No, yet. Not yet, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone eventually at their own pace in their own time is called to, comes to, smells dinner, and decides to show up around the we'll we'll say that there is a dining room. Why not? It's a grand guild hall of a storied guild. There's a dining room. Why not? Berga and whoever else would have been there to help, sounds like Val, uh, would have made a nice roast with a bunch of roasted vegetables. You know, very basic, but hearty, good stuff. And it's pretty good, actually. Like, it's nothing, you know, oh my God. But it's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I could eat like this. That's pretty great. The four guilders, their admin, Berga, and Potion Smith, Etris Pensempre, find themselves around the dinner table. Berga says... So, how was everyone's day? So, I'm imagining a few different things. Um, <laughs> behind Kaskrin's chair, actually, is the large, chunky green tree frog, Mango. And he's just kind of, like, sprawled out behind Cass's chair. And Cass, you can just feel, like, this warmth radiating <laughs> off of him as he's just, like, completely <laughs> chilled out behind, just hanging out. And then Junior would probably be sitting on top of Inchecker's hat as he pulls out a notebook that no one has seen yet, Mm -hmm. but it appears to be a small old notebook with a number of stylized mushroom drawings on it. I was looking around earlier back in the backyard, and I found this cool notebook. It looks like it's been there for a while. It's full of words that I can't read, but Val, I was hoping actually, if you could quickly take a look, and is this this a language that you know? Uh, Yeah, I'll check. Do I speak the language of the notebook? It is not a language that you are familiar with. Um, Nor is it a sister language to any language you know, and not one that you would be able to identify. Mm. Uh, Early, not one that you are able to even kind of pigeon piece together, but similar. Similarly, you could roll a, we'll say some sort of intelligence check to see if you can identify what this might be. History? I think history works just fine for me. Guidance. <laughs> I, I like this idea of like when you're facing a an academic problem, you like are, you know, essentially saying a prayer to yourself, mm-hmm. trying to like as like a meditative way to get focused and also magically empower your yeah. ability to know things. At, at this point, Val's just like been studying, researching all day. She's just rubbing her temples of like, I must find the knowledge of seek. <laughs> and then like I am the knowledge knowledge. Seek. <laughs> Ooh, that's Become very the knowledge. Very existential. Ooh, 19 on the die with Whoa. a four for guidance. Wow. Ooh, wow. 27. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I, I wish we had, I we have no control over this, but you rolled a 20 earlier and a 27, and 22 is in the middle of that. And I just I <laughs> oh, need damn it. If anyone's gonna roll a 22 specifically on anything, <laughs> I think it's got it's gonna be Val. Well, hey, let's we'll, we'll find <laughs> so, out. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll find reasons yeah, to right. have you guys yeah, roll keep, for shit. Uh roll for uh how good it tastes. Uh <laughs> roll for uh <laughs> This is druidic. Ooh. Ooh. Which is <laughs> is that actually <laughs> right? I was like uh <laughs> I, I forgot. Checkers does actually speak to Riddick. <laughs> Do you I speak wondered. it yeah. and not read it? No, it's one of the languages that druids learn, and Checkers, <laughs> as a druid, just knows druidic. You know, so. I wondered, but I, I didn't, can read this actually. Yeah, it's just I upside down. I didn't know exactly how, how multi-classing worked, what you took yeah. a dip in when. Uh-huh. 
I um, I just forgot about it. <laughs> uh, I will hand the notebook back and be like, uh, this is Druidic, but you are reading it upside down and backwards. Oh. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that I couldn't read it. It was just upside down the whole time. Wow. I'll even say like, you know, <laughs> notebooks normally open. So you would read them like left to right. Uh-huh. But since there's drawings in here, it opens like, vertically oh yeah and then oh, i was so yeah, i'll yeah, reorient cool. it for checkers because it <laughs> was it was used in a way not normally used for a yeah. notebook so it seemed confusing there are not many times where i i wish we were a visual medium <laughs> that was the moment where i wish it where if i if only the audience could have seen the way that jonathan's eyes bugged out when he said ah, oh i get it now oh. just imagine it and just like bathe in it listener as we all have been bathed in so as as this is kind of being passed around, mm-hmm. Berga actually will notice it at this point, or we'll be able yeah, to really yeah. see it. Uh-huh. And Berga will kind of look confused and she, oh, ah, uh, oh, that is a, uh, well, it is a random notebook, but it is a random notebook that I recognize. I I think I saw Gabriella, the former Gilder, writing and drawing in it. Hmm. Uh, she would often be out in the little grove out there. Oh wow, this is Gabriella's notebook. I think so. Yeah, I mean the 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 mushrooms. I, again, it looks from there. I'm not a hundred. I never looked. I never asked to look. But I I believe so. And Checkers is like probably he's holding it in one hand and probably shoving like mashed potatoes in his <laughs> in his mouth with the other hand, like not taking too much care not to get food on this. But it's like looking at it in wonder, like oh wow, that's Mal's cool. Twitching slightly <laughs> <laughs> Just as he's now understanding that he can like actually, there's gravy yeah, sloshing right. and. Burger didn't even make mashed potatoes. So who knows where he like pulls a kebab out of his kilt somewhere. It's like, oh wow. Hey, this kebab's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Using the kebab as a right. utensil yeah. to <laughs> just shovel potatoes into his face. Yeah. So he spends the evening like that. <laughs> Strange customs. So Kaskrin has been sitting all day and now he's about to sit some more. Uh, he kind of like hobbles in a little bit because he, he doesn't have the benefit of the La Magic chair. No. And so he, he sits down on this bench next to Mango and he's like, Ugh, my back. And then notices <laughs> the warmth from Mango and it's just like, oh, that is that is it's very like a heating nice. pad. Yeah, yeah it's, right, it's, really, it's really nice. Oh, Cass, I have a set of stretches for you if you're gonna sit for long periods of time at a desk these are essential now you know i'm sure val means well etris says (laughs) (laughs) but you know what takes a long time stretching you know what doesn't (laughs) slapping some ointment on your back both me and caskin are pointing at valeska and etris you know etris you might be (laughs) onto something all i'm saying is you as a dwarf have a natural constitution against any sort of poisons, and I think that only improves your chances. <laughs> I love it because it is exactly what I just was saying. I'm not saying I'm not guaranteeing nothing, of course. Of course, because, of course. Because if I'm being honest, if I had figured this out years ago, I would not be in the gilding business. I would be a multimillionaire. But I think this time it's gotta work. <laughs> and he and he rubs his back one last time. It's like, we'll talk later, Etris. That's all I ask. And he goes back to just shoveling also potatoes <laughs> 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 while while holding a fizzing uh, vial of something also uncomfortably close <laughs> to the food he is shoveling into his mouth. And I'm just imagining that was his cocktail or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he takes a sip, <laughs> washes it down. It's just root beer, y'all. <laughs> And Kaskrin reaches for some of the food and gets a slice of roast and is just enjoying the ambience and the, the, the camaraderie of sitting mm-hmm. around a meal and eating. Do you report out on anything, you know, on anything that you found or anyone that you found? Or just does everyone know, like, ah, oh, I was looking at the, um, I guess the word? Yeah. <laughs> he was, yeah. yeah. He was mentioned he was looking through some of the guild files today, yeah. but wouldn't go into any detail. Cool. Selv is going to take a, uh, a large slice of meat. And just kind of like not really cut it, but fold it on his plate <laughs> and then just, just kind of just directly into his mouth and just start chewing. And then. Oh, what a horrible sight. <laughs> Watching a dragonborn just rip a steak apart or a roast apart with this. Um, and then he'll put his, his fork down kind of as he finishes chewing and then says, Val and I have some interesting things that we found. I'll let her begin. I know she is 
anxious to let everybody know what we were discovered, and I believe she may have a flip chart or PowerPoint. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone turns to face and look at Val, and she has just like chipmunk cheeks full of food <laughs> and she's got like a little like roll of bread that she was just like actively stuffing in her mouth like holy oh. fuck I love that character <laughs> detail more than any other character detail I've ever heard in my entire life that Val just shovels her <laughs> well she was like she was like I'm gonna eat the vegetables and the meat but like rolls and then like, <laughs> so she ate her vegetables first and then was like yeah I eat the good stuff now and so she's been like <laughs> squirrely and so as soon as as soon as self as soon as self like everybody kind of looks and self also now notices what's going on like um, val he, actively has like a says, roll halfway to her he, actually self will turn towards burga and say and my compliments this is delicious uh, <laughs> i'm going to have some more and, and and just you know make a big show of of getting oh, another, yeah, another this is like of... utter silence as he's like <laughs> yeah. these plates and just yeah. scrape yeah. of yeah. a knife yeah. go across this metal yeah. serving platter Val just quick quiet chewing to swallow um anywho and she like goes to grab a drink she's probably sitting next to Etcherson's like Oh no! Because <laughs> there's one probably like three glasses. Yeah, Etris looks down at you <laughs> and looks up very interesting, interestedly, to see what one. And he's not. He won't. And say actually, anything. actually, was, self will push his glass over to Val. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say <laughs> roll a <Yeah>. d six. <laughs> Val is gonna pick one of the three up, <laughs> the one that's closest to her, but also pick up selves in case she needs like a chaser. <laughs> okay, roll me a d six. No, roll me. D- uh, uh, damn it, a D two. I know. I was gonna <laughs> say what's it? Two D two. Yeah, even their odds. D six. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> roll me a D six. <laughs> damn it! <laughs> I tried so hard. That's you guys. okay. We- <laughs> On this most blessed of Tuesdays. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, it's a three. You don't know how you missed it, but this is fizzy as hell, <laughs> 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 and you take it, and it is extremely sweet and it just immediately shoots up to your nose because you were not expecting a carbonated beverage again mm-hmm. you don't know how you looked at it and you didn't see it but it's not carbonated but it is carbonated and Atris is like <laughs> I knew you would like my root beer tell me about it is it good yes we'll talk later actually you were in the middle of something carry on but he's like looking at you very happy and then slides one of the other <laughs> vials uh, <laughs> trying very hard to be very nonchalant about how much he wants to take this away from you, the non root beer and non your glass mm-hmm. away from you. Uh, Val is surprised and like you see her make like crinkle her eyes a little <laughs> bit because the carbonation definitely went up her nose. Yeah. And like she kind of like clears her sinuses a little bit, but then takes more sips <laughs> to like really rinse things down. And she'll push Selv's glass back towards it. Are, are you okay? Can you still feel your spleen? <laughs> I did. I didn't know if I could feel it before. <laughs> Catherine's like pushing That's against his side. Like, That's you? good. Yeah, Val. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in Dragonborns you can feel yeah, your right. spleens. I don't know. Yeah. It, actually, uh, Self will, will take the glass back and uh, take a sip from it and just be like. <laughs> <laughs> um, Val takes a breath and like resets herself. <laughs> And says, yes, unfortunately I did not have time for a presentation, (laughs) but we've discovered some facts about this creature, namely that its name is the Mothman. We still have many questions, but more of what we know is that it will attack nightly and after it's finished its attacks, the last place it is seen is typically the site of a disaster. There were many examples ranging from a breach in the walls, a collapse of a building. It's never anything good. But again, the last attack that happens, that site will have a disaster. Valeska, did your research say anything about how to stop it? What it's weak to? Why haven't our weapons been affecting it as much as we thought they would. Or why some of them are more effective than others. Unfortunately, nothing like that in our library, 
my plan is to go to the main library tomorrow to do more research. I have a lot of information to go off of and find more. But for tonight, this is really all I have. Well, that sounds like plenty to me. You hear a voice come from the wall behind Kaskarin as uh, that, uh, seemingly out of self, nowhere. Self turns to Cass. Yeah, just we, like, we give another, we, each other another look. We have to get that. <laughs> yeah, we got to do something about that. As the tree detective, Alareth, appears through the wall that you guys are all dining at. Pardon me. I let myself in. I've been hearing about all you've reported. It's very, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Any change with the librarian? She's getting better. The doctors there said she'd be... They had hopes that she'd be awake in another day or two. I asked around, tried to see if there were any other attacks before my client. Didn't find any. Doesn't mean there weren't any. Could be that no one, sur- no one survived the attacks. Don't know. That's all I have, unfortunately. That seems to be all we have, too. I should be able to find more in the library tomorrow. But it seems like if these attacks are happening nightly, there will be one tonight. Agreed. Ooh, fun. Agreed. On the happening tonight part, not so much the fun part. That's typically our take on Checker's idea of fun (laughs) as well. I think, unfortunately, we've got a long night, another long night ahead of us. Even if we can't do much, four additional people out on the streets patrolling could make the difference between someone living and someone dying tonight. That's very true. Very true. Berga, could we reach out to Namgar and have this information sent to the town guard? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a a good idea. I will... I will send to Roth... And out of out of one of the like side tables in a drawer that could not possibly fit this creature slams open out of nowhere, and you see the familiar horrible head of the, Taroth. The familiar, familiar. Yes. Uh, so we can say it twice. <laughs> says, yes, yes. I I will find Namgar. I will tell him I was. Also listening. <laughs> <laughs> and Berga just like looks at him and just like does a long blink and then says, yeah, go do it. And he like rolls out of the, <laughs> of the drawer and flops on the ground. You can't see him over the table, but like thuds onto the ground. And then you hear him scuttle off, you know, through the door mm. and uh, off to do his mistress's bidding. And Berga just like turns back to everyone and it's just, I'm still very sorry about him. (laughs) (laughs) Why? Don't be sorry. I think he's great. Did not choose him earlier. Kaskrin, you asked if I would do it again. I mostly say yes. Mm. There are some things I would wish different. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, yeah, uh, back back to it. And Alareth says, that sounds good. Do you want to split up? We do have a lot of ground to cover. It might be better if we split up and see what kind of coverage we can get. Checkers, you were out in the the city today, right? Did you? Yeah. You've seen it pretty well now. I have a pretty good idea, yeah. Okay. What if we have one person go with Checkers and we can split in teams of two and cover more ground? Two and three? Two and We could do two and three. I-, I could help, Etra says. We could do three and three. I think that might give us the best chances of finding out more about this in the time we have. So, myself, Junior, and Mango are one team. That's three. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest three of teams of three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one stack yeah. and two teams. But I think if we split up, that will give us the best chances. I want to make sure we stay safe, but we can't just walk around tonight and find nothing. There's no time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to divide the city into four parts. We'll have two people roll a d4, whoever would like to, and that will determine how your night goes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. I see Jonathan and David have picked up their d4s. Three. Two. Two. 
Two. The number in my mind was a two. The night goes on. The two teams separate according to your wishes and go to different parts of the town. One of the groups, as you are going through, the night wears on. The activity start, slowly starts to die down. Agmar is a big city, a busy city, but still it gets late enough. There's not a lot going on. Until, in the distance, the serenity of city living is broken by a piercing scream. And that's where we'll end this episode. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy Tuesday, Tuesday, Spooky Tuesday. (laughs) See you next week. If you love Reckless Attack, you'll love the people who helped us make it possible. Our logo artist, Maggie Pearson, character artist, Borg Cinnabon, and website designer, Donnie Chung, put together all the visuals you see for our podcast. We have some fantastic music, too. Our opening and closing theme was written by Chicago-based composer Megan Carnes. We also use the works of Michael Gelfi and Alexander Nakarada for our background music. You can find all of their social media links and more info about them on our website, RecklessAttack.com. See you all next time.